Okay, so here is what we've got today. <laughs> hey. I like a mole dance. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're just got really weird really fast. All right, so here's uh, the continuation we left off yesterday. It's a loud That's a loud, that's a loud slider. So there's a couple of ways that you've got to be able to visualize this process. And then, you know, like when Mr. Elliott was in yesterday, so he was the guy that graduated like 95, so roughly 28 years ago, okay? And I asked him, hey, what's all about those number? Oh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Still remembers that number after all these years. So it's one of the most important numbers that exists in all of science, okay? And just to memorize the number doesn't mean anything. You have to understand why we have that number, okay? So let's say, for example, this is a carbon atom, okay? Horribly not the scale, but let's say this is a carbon atom, okay? So the reason why Avogadro's number is what it is, is that if I have a scale, okay, and I take this, and I just put one of them on it, or I just put one single carbon atom on that scale, the scale won't even register, because each one has such a small mass. But if I take these, then I stack them up, and 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 I stack them up, okay? And if I put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms on that scale, Okay, so imagine I'm going to stack all these up, and I'm going to look at that scale, and I'm going to say, hey, what's that scale going to read? That scale will read exactly 12.0 grams, okay? That's what that scale is going to read. And the significance of that 12.0 grams is because if you look at your periodic table, and you find the relative atomic mass of carbon, that's also 12, Okay? So there's nothing, and that was just a convenient way to measure, because there's no way that we're going to go into the lab, and I'm going to go to Keaton and say, "Hey, Keaton, go get me one carbon atom. Okay, I need to do it. I need to do a, a demo. I need one carbon atom." Not going to happen. Okay, we deal in mass quantities. We need a lot of them. So they literally they played. What well, I make this up in my version. They played rock paper scissors and said, "Okay." We have relative atomic mass, so you have to understand the sequence. Relative atomic mass was established first, okay? And then they said, okay, we have these numbers. What do we do with them? They said, hmm, I don't know. Let's put grams on the end of it. So technically, when you look on the periodic table, when you see that symbol of carbon, and up here you have 12.0, technically, that's measured in what we call AMUs. Okay, atomic mass units. That's a relative value. Okay, so what that means is if I have a pan balance and I took 12 hydrogen atoms, because each hydrogen atom has a relative atomic mass of one, and I put one carbon atom on the other side, that's going to balance out because it takes 12 hydrogen atoms to balance out one carbon atom. Okay, magnesium is like 24.3, which is about twice of carbon. So if I put two carbons over here, that would balance out one magnesium. So they had the relative atomic mass values first, okay? So if you understand the sequence, this, this makes a lot more sense, okay? They had the relative atomic mass values first. And they said, oh, what are we going to measure? It? They said, hmm, let's do grams. That was all the rage at the time, okay? It was a metric system. It was new. A scientific community in Europe was all about the metric system. So they said, okay, hey, let's put grams. If this had been developed in the United States, probably a relative atomic mass might have been measured in ounces, okay, or pounds or something like that. But since it was done in Europe, they said, eh, we're Europe. We are stubs. We are going to use the metric system. We will measure this stuff in grams. And they said, okay, fine. We're going to measure it in grams. So then what Avogadro proposed, he says, look, if I have a mole of anything, mole of carbon atoms, mole of hydrogen atoms, mole of anything, 
I propose that it's going to have the same number of particles. And then the challenge becomes, how did you determine the number of particles? Okay, that's the hard part. So there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do that. They said, okay, hey, here's the number. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So Avogadro proposed this idea, and we call it Avogadro's number, but he didn't actually find the number itself. Okay, and you'll see that that happens a lot in science. Like Isaac Newton, who developed the laws of gravity. There's, there's a, a, a universal gravitational constant that we use in physics calculations, okay? Einstein said the number exists. I got other things to do. I got to develop calculus. I'm going to leave it to somebody else to figure out that number, okay? And somebody else did. So basically, Avogadro did the same thing. He goes, I know in one mole of anything, it's going to contain the same number of particles. I'm going to leave it up to someone else to do that. I got other things to do. And that's what they settled on. But they still call it Avogadro's number, even though he didn't actually find it, okay? So here's the deal. So if you were to draw a graph, and you have number of particles here, and you have moles here, okay? And you have one mole, and you have two, and here's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and yours 12.04 and there's one mole, and there's two moles, and it's gonna make this nice line. And it doesn't make any difference what that is, okay? Whether it's carbon atoms, whether it's, this is technically a molecule of methane, which we'll talk about later, okay, CH4. Here's a cute little water molecule, looks like Mickey Mouse on steroids, okay? A mole of anything does not make any difference what it is, and that's one of the first things that you have to get. Just like if you have a dozen donuts, if you have a dozen eggs, if you have a dozen packages of ramen noodles, it doesn't matter. A dozen of anything contains the same number. So if you have a mole versus particle line, what you have doesn't matter. Carbon atoms, methane, doesn't matter. It's all the same. Now, where it does matter is when you have moles and then you have mass. This changes. So for example, if you, there's like, say there's 12, 24, okay? So if I have one mole of carbon atoms, so if I stack up 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of these, that's gonna have a mass of 12 grams. So there's my carbon line, okay? Now, if I have my magnesium line, my magnesium line, one mole of that's gonna be 24.3. So a mass versus mole graph has different slopes, okay? But a particle versus mole graph has the exact same slope, okay, for everything. Got that idea. Okay, now, some people, we're gonna do a bunch of mole conversions. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways. Some people like a visual approach. So this is what's known as moles mole, okay? And you don't have to use this, right? But some people like a visual approach to solving problems. Just like, remember when we did like the density and some of you would draw that triangle because you like the visual approach to it, okay? I'm going to show you the visual approach. I'm also going to show you the mathematical approach, okay? How you choose to solve these problems doesn't matter to me, okay? It's how you, you have to find a way that makes sense to you. So on Moles Mole, there's a center, and we're going to add on to this, okay? So at the center of, the, of this mole is the mole, okay? That's it. So that's the main part. Center of this small mole. Boom. There you go. Now, out of this, there's going to be two different stores. Okay? One of those is going to be a restaurant. Okay? And this is where you consume mass quantities of food, okay? So you can go from the mole 
up to the restaurant where you consume mass quantities. Now, imagine that you're walking down this hallway and along this hallway, there is a periodic table. So what this means is that when you walk from the mole, visualize that you're walking down this hallway. And when you when you're going to the restaurant, it's like, hey, I need to get some ramen noodles. Okay? I'm gonna go get some food. I'm gonna consume mass quantities of food. So when you go from the mole to the mass, you're gonna walk by this big mass of periodic table that's, that's painted on the corridor. Okay? So you got that visual. So if you're going from moles to max, you have to look at the periodic table. Okay? It's the rule. You can't go by. It's like, oh, I'm just going to ignore it. No, no, you can't ignore it. This thing is like massive flashing neon light kind of thing. Okay? Now, over here, we're going to have a part store. Okay? And at the part store, you can buy a whole bunch of different things. You can buy atoms. You can buy molecules, and you can buy, we'll talk more about this later, a thing called a formula unit, okay? So those are the first three things that you can buy. Eventually, you'll be able to buy ions, which are charged particles, okay? So but here's the deal. So if you're gonna buy anything, atoms, molecules, formula units, ions, whatever, okay? That's where you're gonna go. Now, here's where this plays out. When you go buy that, there's a guy that's selling avocados, okay? And he's got an avocado stand. And every time he walk, every time you walk by, he is going to try and sell you 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd avocados. Okay? It's an avocado number, right? That's what he's going to try and sell you. So you walk by, right? And he goes, hey, hey, man, come on, buy, buy my avocados. I'll sell you 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, make you a sweet deal, right? Okay? I got a lot of avocados. So if you're going from moles up to the park store, okay? Hello? So if you're going from the moles up to the part store, you, you, there's no way to escape this guy. He is the most obnoxious man in the entire world. And his goal every day is to sell avocados. So whenever you walk by from the moles to the parts, and it doesn't make any difference what you're buying, atoms, molecules, ions, ramen noodles, doesn't make any difference. He's going to yell, hey, yo! 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, okay? So there's two distinct things that you're gonna go from. So if you're going from moles to the mass, and everything up here is gonna be measured in grams, okay? That's the other thing. All the food that you're gonna buy is gonna be measured in grams. Not ounces, not pounds, not kilograms, nothing. Only in grams. So, if you're going from the mole to the mass, you gotta look at the periodic table. If you're going from the moles to the part store, this guy's going to cost you and yell, hey, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, got that visual. Now, here's what you cannot do. Listen to me very carefully. What you cannot do is go directly from the mass over to here, okay? You can't do that. You cannot go from here over to here. The only way that you can go from mass to parts is through the mole, okay? So you are forbidden, you are forbidden to go from here over to here, okay? So you're forbidden, you cannot do it. So if you're starting here, you can go here. If you're starting here, you can go here, okay? But you cannot go from mass to parts, forbidden absolutely forbidden. You have to go through the mold. Got this visual. Okay. Now, here's how this plays out. Let's start with something simple. Let's say that I go to 
Alec, and I say, hey, Alec, I need you to go into the lab, and I need a couple of moles of carbon, okay? All right, good. This is work camp. I got this. So, Alec goes into the storeroom, finds a bottle label, labeled carbon, okay? Within that, there's a whole bunch of these. Now, here's the problem. When what units do our scales measure in? Grams. Our scales don't measure in moles. If our scales measured in moles, <coughs> Alec could just put a weighing dish on there, press tear, and he could begin to pour out carbon atoms and tell the scale read, read 2.00. Okay? If the scale was measured in moles, we wouldn't have to do these conversions. Because, oh, ah, there's two moles. Boom. I add it till I get two moles. Boom, I've got it. Okay? But the problem is, is that developing a scale that measures in moles is tough because I'd have to have a carbon scale. I'd have to have a lithium scale. I'd have to have a water scale. I'd have to have all these different scales for all these potential different compounds that exist in our universe. And I was like, well, that's daunting. So we said, now I can't build a, a, a scale that measures in moles for everything. Like, oh, what's the common thing? Mass, grams. Okay, that I can do. So, he wants to measure out two moles of carbon, okay? Now, we're going to do a conversion factor just like we did before, okay? So, just like when you're converting centimeters to meters, something like that, it's the same process. I have moles of carbon up here, so I'm going to put moles of carbon down there. I want those to cancel out. This is a conversion factor, okay? Now, if I have one mole of carbon, how am I going to find the mass of one mole of carbon? Just a bit of it. What am I going to do? Oh, oh, drop my lid. What was the question? <laughs> if I want to figure out the mass of one mole of carbon, where am I going to look? Periodic table. And what's the value of, of carbon? 12 grams. Now, that's a fantastic answer. So what you want to do at the, at, on this class, when you're measuring out and finding that relative atomic mass, always go to the tenths place. Okay, you don't have to go tens, hundreds, thousands, all of that, but you always want to go to the tenths place. Okay, as far as we're going to go, because that's about all our scales are going to read anyway. Okay, so you don't have to write out twelve point zero zero one two three whatever. Okay, you just go to the nearest tenth. So that's grams. So if you look at what's happening, the moles of carbon are going to cancel out. I get grams of carbon. Multiply these together, I get 24.0 grams. Okay? Well, there we go. So now here's now we're going to go back to the mole. So what happened here is that I started here in moles, right? And I wanted to go up there to grams. I went on the periodic table, I went from here to here. Now, when I went from moles to mass, notice that I multiplied, okay? So if you go, uh, right in the universe, okay? So if you're going, it's kind of cool, right, like it's stars, okay? So if I'm going from moles up to mass, I multiply, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm starting here, I'm in moles. I wanna end up in mass, I'm gonna look at the periodic table, I'm gonna multiply by that molar mass, okay? Got that concept. And that's what we did down here. Now, if we reverse the process, I go to Carter and I said, hey, Carter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you measure out uh, 70, no, I can't write it that long, uh, 71 grams of chlorine gas, okay? Uh, 71 grams of chlorine, okay? So I'm going to give Carter 71 grams of chlorine gas, okay? So if that's the case, I'm going to say, but Carter, I need, I need you to tell me how many moles that is. Oh, okay, right. So it's the same process. 
I've got grams up here. I'm going to put grams down here. Okay, grams of chlorine. Here we go. And then I'm going to put one mole. Okay? Carter, what's the molar mass of chlorine? Right side, it's a halogen. Atomic number 17. Yes, yeah. What's the molar mass? 35.5. Okay. So with chlorine, we're always going to use 35.5. Okay. Chlorine is always going to be 35.5. Don't round it to 36. Don't round it down to 35. Okay. Chlorine is going to be 35.5. Okay. So if I take 71 and divide that by 35.5, I get two moles. Okay. So if I gave Carter 71 grams of chlorine, I would be giving him two moles. Now, look what happens. If we go back up here. With this one, with Carter, I started in mass, and I ended up in moles. So what did I do? Multiply or divide? I divided. So if I'm going this way, I divide, okay? So, if you're in mass, you're going to moles, you look at the periodic table, you divide by the molar mass. If you're in moles and you're going up to mass, you look at the periodic table and you multiply, okay? Now, this is just a visual, so, and I'm like on the test, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this drawn up on the board, okay? So that you, know, you just have to know how to use it, okay? Now, some people like the pure mathematical side. It's like, Mr. Burkamp, this is just conversions. Yeah, it's just conversions. But some people like that visual approach. Now, eventually, we're going to add on to this mall. We're going to have another mall beside it, okay? We're going to get into what's called stoichiometry and figure out how reactions take place. So we're going to add on to this, okay? This is just the opening portion of the mall. Now, let's say that... Uh, we're going to change it up a little bit. And uh, now I'm going to go to Peyton. I'm going to go to Peyton. I need, uh, you're going to measure out three moles of, say, I don't know, pick, pick, and, pick an element, Peyton. Um, silicone. Silicone, okay. So, I know Peyton has three moles of silicone. I want to know how many atoms are in that, okay? Now, anytime you deal with parts, molecules, formula units, whatever it is, that's always going to be a really, 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 really big number because of the fact that each particle is really, 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 really small, okay? So, we're going to do this conversion. So we're going to have one mole of silicon. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is how many atoms are there in those three moles. Okay? So we're trying to figure out. Now, if you go back to the periodic table, what I'm doing is I'm starting here. Okay? I've given Peyton three moles of silicon. I'm trying to figure out how many atoms there are in those three moles. So at this point, I'm going to walk from here up to there. I'm going to, I'm going to go by the avocado stand, right? And he's going to go, hey, 6.02 times 7 to the 23rd, I make you a sweet deal, okay? So notice I'm not using the periodic table. I'm not on this side. I'm over here on this side, okay? So I'm going to walk by the avocado stand. So I know in one mole of silicon, how many atoms are there in one mole? 6.02 Fantastic. With feeling and conviction. Okay? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So, I, and you have to be able to do this calculation. So, when you're doing this, when you punch in that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, go 6.02, and then you sh should have something like an EE -E key, if you have a TI. Okay? Sometimes it's, it's an EXP. Okay? And then you're going to 6.02 EE23. Okay? That's, you've got to be able to punch this number in. So, 
Mr. Queen, what do you get out of that calculation then? It should be. Oh, you do. That's you actually have like times ten to the ten. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. That one actually is weird. I've never seen it. It actually has that. Well, we're gonna follow him. So, what'd you get? One point eight oh six times ten to the twenty fourth. One point eight oh six times ten to the twenty fourth atoms of silicon. Okay. Now, notice what we did. Notice what we did. If you go back up here, we went from the mole to the part store. Did we multiply or did we divide? Multiply. Multiply. So if we're going this way, oddly enough, <coughs> bless you, we multiply. Okay? Cool. So, now, if we reverse this process, and let's say that I'm going to uh, go to Emma, and I'm going to give Emma uh, Emma, pick a number between 20 and 24. 22. Okay, so I'm going to give Emma uh, 5.03 you said 22? Mm -hmm. Times 10 to the 22nd. Uh, Izzy, pick an element. Uh, copper. Copper. Ooh, nice. Copper atoms. Okay. So I'm going to give Emma 5.03 times 10 to the 22nd carbon atoms. And I want to know how many moles that is. Now, before you do any calculations, okay, before you do any calculations at all, Ella, or is the number of moles that I'm going to give Emma bigger or smaller than one? Bigger, same, smaller. Why? <laughs> Other than the fact that I was shaking my head going, don't stop on your previous answers. If I gave her one mole of carbon at or one mole of copper atoms, how many atoms would I give her? You say one? One. If I gave her exactly one mole, how many copper atoms would I give her? Let me give you a hint. It starts with the number six ends in 23. Oh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. There you go. I, give, I would give her 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms, or copper atoms, right? So, Ella, yes. is this number bigger or smaller than 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd? Smaller. Smaller. So, my answer in moles has to be? Smaller. Smaller, right? Got that? Yeah. We're solid. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So what we're going to do is, if I can get this thing to change. There we go. So what we're going to do is, oddly enough, we're going to do a conversion. So I'm going to rewrite this. 5.03 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms. Right? Now, in case you haven't figured out, they all work the same way. So... If I have copper atoms here, what am I going to put down there? Copper atoms, right? Okay. I want to put copper atoms there. What am I going to put up on top? One mole. And in one mole, Ella, how many copper atoms are there? 6.02 oh, times 10 to the 23rd, okay? Now, so I'm gonna take 5.03, that was actually to the 22nd, my bad. You, and we pick 22. To the 22nd. So, somebody through the middle of your calculators take 5.03, e to the 22nd, and divide that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 0.0. 
Zero point what? Zero eight four. Zero eight four yeah. moles. Okay. Everybody cool with that? Know how I got it. You're feeling confident about your calculators. Now, so oddly enough, if I'm going from parts down to moles, what am I going to do? Multiply or divide? Divide. So if I'm going to go down this way, then I'm going to divide. Okay? Now, here's the absolute thing that you <coughs> cannot do. Okay? Listen to me. You all have to make a solemn vow. This is the one thing that you will not do. Is cross this, make this combination. And whatever you do, you have to promise me on all of that is chemistry and moly and everything else. The one thing that you never do is that you write 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd grams. Okay? Never, ever, ever. And here's the reason why. That mass is somewhere between like the mass of our moon and the mass of the earth. Okay? Okay? So I am not going to expect you to go into the lab and measure out a quantity that's somewhere between the moon's mass and the earth's mass. Okay? So do you will never, ever, ever, ever use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd grams. It's big. Okay? You're never going to measure out this quantity. So don't ever use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd grams. You can use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, forms of units, molecules, squirrels, penguins, whatever, okay? But you are absolutely forbidden, forbidden from ever using 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd grams. This is why you write down units, okay? So that you avoid this going, ah, oh, man. Because I will snarkly write on your paper like, really? I'm going to ask you to measure out of mass bigger than the moon. Let's think about that for just a second. Okay. So if you're ever calculating mass and you get a really, 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 really big number of grams, stop. Okay? You have done something wrong. Okay? So just take this back and say, Mr. Burkamp, I promise you, I will never use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd grams. That's all I ask of you. And if we can get through this class and none of you do that, that's going to be a cool thing. Now, here's, uh, here's my prediction. Is that you all sit here and go, Mr. Burkamp, don't be silly. You won't do that. And you lie. You lie. Okay? You lie. I would like to think it's true, and I would be absolutely ecstatic. Okay, I would be absolutely sad if we get through this entire class and I never get a mass bigger than the moon for a quantity that you're going to measure out. If that happens, I would I would be the happiest chemistry teacher that ever walks the face of the earth. Okay? Hopefully that happens. Now, let's stop for a second. Stop that camera. Stand up, take a stretch. Okay? And we'll... So a little bit of terminology, okay? So from that, as we go through this class, we're going to have three broad classifications of particles. One is atoms. Everybody's cool with that, okay? So if you can find it on the periodic table, that's an atom. Copper atoms, lithium atoms, whatever, okay? Molecules, we're going to use those for non-metals that are hooked up together. So remember, on the periodic table, basically, if it's in the top right-hand corner, that's going to be a non-metal. So for example, you can have water, oxygen, and hydrogen, okay? You can have ammonia, which is NH3. Carbon dioxide, you all are exhaling carbon dioxide right now. Oxygen, which we'll get into later, oxygen, uh, nitrogen, 
fluorine, okay? All of those elements, those gases, are what we call diatomics because there's two of them that are hooked together. So like when you breathe in oxygen, you actually breathe in two oxygen atoms that are hooked up together, okay? And the same thing with nitrogen. <clears throat> and the diatomics will get into why that exists later on. The short version is that Mother Nature is a lazy clean Madonna, and so mm -hmm. it's easier for its oxygen to be hooked up together like this than it is to be separate, and that's why it's more stable. So, if it's non-metals, hey, you got molecules. Formula units, we will use when we have metals and non-metals. And this is what we're going to use. A, we're going to use a lot more of these than we are the molecules. So when you take salt, okay, sodium chloride, okay, that's a metal, sodium, on the left side of the periodic table, and you have chlorine on the right side of the periodic table. Oh, sodium chloride. MgF2, magnesium fluoride, lithium oxide, okay. When you all burnt steel wool, that's you formed iron oxide, which is, a, you would talk about a formula unit. So you would say, hey, I need a certain number of formula units of sodium chloride. So that's just kind of the norm, norm, nomenclature. So you're gonna to have to do, and you do conversions, all of these atoms, molecules, formula units, all of those are over here in the part store, okay? So if you see anything relating to that, and eventually you would deal with ions. Ions are charged particles. Those are gonna be the big four. So if you go into the parts store, those are the things that you can buy. Atoms, molecules, formula units, ions, okay? If you're over on the, on the restaurant side, you have, it's a one trick pony. You can only buy things in grains, okay? Got that idea, okay. Now, this is where we're going to combine some ideas together. So let's say that we're going to make water, okay? Water has some really, really cool properties that allow us to be here having this conversation. It's solvent, it's liquid room temperature. When it freezes, it's less dense than the liquid, so it floats, okay? It freezes at zero degrees, boils at 100, okay? And without water's unique properties, we probably wouldn't be here having this conversation because if water only existed as a, as a vapor at room temperature, like oxygen and nitrogen does, we would never have water, okay? We would only have water vapor. And so that's one of the things that allows us to be here having this conversation. So let's say that you want to measure out one mole of water, okay? Now, here's the problem. If I said I want to measure out one mole of oxygen, Keaton, if you wanted to measure out one mole, I can't deal with the rainbow thing. It's just, it's just a little bit psychedelic for me. I can deal with lava. Let's deal with lava. So if I asked you to measure out one mole of oxygen, how many grams would you measure out? Keaton? 16. 16.0. Okay, all right? Now, here's what you have to understand about this. We'll spend more time talking about this later. When you look at this ratio, H2O, this means two things. It's a ratio of particles, like this, that says that I've got two hydrogen atoms to every one oxygen, okay? That's a ratio of particles. Now, this goes, this goes back to a bigger idea. If I multiplied that by a thousand and I had 2,000 water molecules and 1,000, excuse me, 2,000 hydrogen atoms and 1,000 oxygen atoms, would it still be the same ratio? Yeah, okay? So as long as I multiply everything by the same number, it's the same ratio. Now, if I took two times, now this is the shortcut way of, of writing Avogadro's number, okay? So if you don't want to write 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, the shortcut way is you put a capital N and then a subscript A. This, I, if you put this, I know what this is gonna mean. Oh, that's Avogadro's number, okay? So it's kind of shortcut way. 
I will recognize this. Oh, Avogadro is known. And then oxygen, then I would have one Avogadro. So here's the deal. If I have 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms, and I have 1, or if I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms, it's still in the same ratio, still 2 to 1. But here's the kicker, okay? Abby, if I have one, if I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms, how many moles do I have? One. One. So guess what? Not only not <coughs> only is this a ratio of particles, this is also a ratio of moles. So this also means that I have two moles of hydrogen to every one mole of oxygen. But what it is not, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. It is not a ratio of mass. This does not say I have two grams of hydrogen to one gram of oxygen. It is a ratio of particles. It is a ratio of moles. It is not, it is not a ratio of mass. Okay? Hugely important. Now, so here's the deal. So Keaton just said, hey, Mr. Burkham, if I measure out one mole of oxygen, hey, that's 16 grams, right? It's cool, right? Cool. Now, if I measure out two moles of hydrogen, how many grams is that going to be? Nope. Oh. Two. Two, what? Because the mass of hydrogen is one? Yeah, the molar mass of hydrogen is one. <coughs> so if I have two moles of that, I'm going to have two grams. So let's do a little bit of math. So if I take two grams and add that, or 16 and add that to two, I get 18 grams. Now, that's technically 18 grams per mole. So if I want to measure out one mole of water, I'm going to measure out 18 grams because it's one mole of oxygen, two moles of hydrogen, add that together, boom, I get 18. So, hopefully this works. No, I'm just going to go get, no, I'll just, I, don't, I can't miss that camera not working. So I'll just, I'm just going to bring the scale up here. Okay. Plug it in. Yeah. Okay. So here's the deal. So I got water, got a dry shirt and so on. So if the task is, look, we're gonna get a little up close to personal here. So I want to measure out one mole of water. So I put this on here, and I wanted to hit this, it's, it's, it's called a terror button or zero button. So I hit that, and the scale is now reading zero. So what I want to do is I want to measure out one mole of water. Now, if the scale measured in moles, it would be simple. I would just, yes? Uh, the camera can't see what you're doing, so if you wanted to see what you're doing, you should down. Here, just can you just hold that like that? There we go. Okay. All right, got it. I was going to say we can do it together. I got it. How many? There we go. We got it. Okay. So here's the deal. So right now the scale was reading zero. So the question being is that if this scale measured in moles of water, it would be simple. I would add water until the scale read 1.00. I'd be done. But does the scale read in moles? What does the scale read in? Grams. So if I come in here, and then I'm going to add oops, water. Control point is 
seven. Photos. Okay, scale is reading exactly 18.00. So when this volume of water right here is one mole of water, it's exactly 18 grams. Now, what if I go up to 36? How many moles would I have? Oh, two. See the pattern forming here. Okay, fantastic. All right, so we're done. We can go back up to the normal viewing platform. Now, here we go, kids. So, here's the next question. I just measured out one mole of water, which we ha has a mass of exactly 18 grams. Okay? Got that. Now, here's the next question. How many of these Mickey Mouse molecules of water are in those 18 grams? Ella. 6.02 times, no. Keep going. Oh, times 7 times 3. Fantastic. No, 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 you're fine. Because a mole of anything contains how many particles? Avocado's number. Avocado's number. Okay, 6.02 times 7 to the 23rd. So if you, if I can do this, so I got those 18 grams. And if I could take a, the pair of magic tweezers and I could reach in there and I could start pulling out individual water molecules and I'm gonna count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? If I do that and when I get done, I would have pulled out 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of these. Okay, got the visual. Okay, now, where things get a little bit complicated, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can do this. So on, out of this packet, over here on page 10, okay, you want to find, for example, the molar mass of lead sulfate. PB... SO4 2. Okay? Now, you gotta let me explain what how this is physically gonna look. So this is lead sulfate. So SO4, if you look on and you gotta start to get used to the terminology. So that one period I table that I gave you that was mine, and it had all the names like the ions and little boxes up at the top. There are certain ones that you're going to know because we're going to use a lot. We're going to know sulfates, nitrates we're going to use a lot, hydroxides we're going to use a lot. Those are going to be the big three that we're going to use most often. Sulfates, nitrates, and hydroxides. Okay? So if you want to determine the molar mass of lead sulfate. So I go to Raman and I go, hey, I need to mix up some chemicals. I need, I need one mole of lead sulfate. But again, she's going to go, it's work out. Scale won't read in moles. Oh, measures in grams. Oh, what are you going to do? So she's got to figure out that mass. So visually what this is, there's one lead atom in the middle. There's a sulfur, and around that, that sulfur, there are four oxygens. And over here, there's another sulfur with four oxygens attached to that. So what this, when you see this bracket and a two on the outside of it, that means that you have two of those groups, okay? That's what that, that's what that system means. You have two of those groups. If there was a three, I would have three of them. This is, and if you look on that chart, this is what's called a polyatomic ion. Okay, polyatomic means that there is more than one atom involved in it. Sulfates, nitrates, all of these are polyatomic ions. So, 
If you want to figure out the molar mass of lead sulfate, PbSO42, I'm going to show you two ways that you can do this. You pick the one that makes the most sense to you. So what some people will do is they'll go, okay, I got PbSO42. What they'll do is they'll distribute this two, and they're going to go, that means I have one lead, I have two sulfurs, how many oxygens? Eight oxygens, okay? That's what that number means, like you distribute that two. Now, at this point, now I'm going to write down these molar masses. So look on your periodic table, what's the molar mass of lead? 207.2 or 207? 207.2. On all of these, you want to go out to the tenth. Okay? Now, what's the molar mass of sulfur? 32.1, I think? Yes. Okay? Make sure that you use 32.1, but how many of those do I have? Two of them. So I'm going to take two times 32.1. Okay, cool with this? Then I've got eight oxygens. Oxygen is one that you're gonna fit. That's, you, we use oxygen all the time. Oxygen is 16, okay, 16.0. So I'm gonna have eight times 16.0. So here's what you wanna do. So somebody take two times 32.1, which should get you 64.2. And then somebody take eight times 16. What'd you say? 128. 128. Then we got 207.2. So now we're going to add these together. So you're going to take 207.2 plus 64.2 plus 128. Let me know what you get. Something point four. 399.4. 399.4. Now, technically, and the sooner you kind of embrace this idea, it's subtle, but it's important. But as soon as you embrace this idea that, oh, this is grams per mole, okay? It isn't just grams. So if I want to measure out one mole of something, okay, I'm going to measure out 399.4 grams. So here's the difference. If I measure out a mole of water, I'm measuring out 18 grams. If I measure out a mole of lead sulfate, that's going to be 399.4. Now, what some people like to do, okay, and if you want to do this, it actually saves you a little bit of time. What they'll do is they'll find just the mass of the sulfate by itself, and then they'll just multiply that by two. So let's just find the mass of the sulfate. So the sulfate is just going to be one sulfur plus the four oxygen. So sulfur is 32.1. 4 times 16 is 64, I think, and you get 696.1. So if you want to, because we're going to use sulfate so much, what you can do is take that periodic table, like use the one that I gave because it's not laminated, and go, oh, sulfate, that's 96.1 grams per mole. That way when you see sulfates, you, it saves you going through and doing the sulfur and the oxygens by themselves. Oh, it's just 96.1. So then, basically what you're going to do is you're going to treat that sulfate as one thing. Oh, that's 96.1, but there's two of those, and then I'm going to add that to the lead. So if you want to do that, that's fine, okay? If you like, no, I want to count individual atoms, that's fine, okay? It's what... <laughs> Wrong... Okay, it's whatever you want to do, okay? So you can either treat it as one entity and write that on your periodic table because that will save you some time, okay? Or you can go, hey, I'm just going to count the individual atoms. It's a personal preference thing. Okay, got the idea. So when you have complex formula units, and this is what we would talk about. Since this is lead sulfate, we would say, formula units of lead sulfate, okay? Now, so this is where it all comes together, okay? I want to see how you do on this problem. 
So we're going to take that water, okay? And let's say that we measure out 30 grams of water, okay? Measure out 30 grams. What I want to know is how many molecules of water are there in 30 grams, okay? Now, before you do any calculations, there's 30 grams, about twice as what I have in that graduated cylinder. I'm going to try and figure out how many of these are in here. So before you do any calculation, is your answer going to be a really big number or a really small number? Big. Why? On the moles ball, yeah, we got to do this, okay? That's true. But what do you know about the size of each one of these water molecules inside that graduated cylinder? Each water molecule is really, 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 really small, right? So it's going to take a whole bunch of these to get to 30 grams. So just think this through. It's like, man, that's going to take a lot, okay? All right. I know my number is going to be really big. Now, we're going to start, we're going to go way back up here to the mall, okay? Go way, 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 way back up here, okay? Now, if you're a visual person, I'm starting here in grams, right? 30 grams. Where do I want to end up? The park store. I want to end up over here in the park store. <coughs> Can I go directly from the restaurant to the park store? No. No. Where do I have to go? The moles. moles. So I've got to go to the moles first, so what do I have to use? Periodic table. First thing I've got to use is the periodic table. That's going to get me to here. That's going to get me to moles. Then what am I going to have to go by? Avocado's number. Avocado stand. I can use avocado's number, so I end up in here. So I'm going to use the periodic table, and I'm going to go by the avocado stand, okay? So it was like, oh, it's fancy. We can handle it. I got all the faith in the world. So I'm going to go way back out here. So I'm going to start with 30 grams of water, okay? And if you follow this process every time, it eliminates so many mistakes. So I got grams of water here. So what am I going to put down in the bottom right corner? Grams of water. Grams of water. Okay. Now, what do I want to convert the grams of water to? Moles. So one mole of water is how many grams? 18.0 because it's one oxygen and two hydrogen. So this is 18.0. Now, if I only do this conversion, okay, if I only do this conversion, what units am I going to have? Moles. I am only, I'm going to have moles. So at this point in our journey, Okay, we'll do a shortcut version of this. At this point, look what happened. I walked by the periodic table, and right now, I'm in moles. And if that's all the further I needed to go, I'm done. I can stop right there. Now, is my answer, before you do any math at all, is my answer going to be bigger or smaller than one mole? Bigger. 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 Why? Plus 30 is bigger than 18. If I, if I have 18 grams, how many moles is that? One. One. Right? I have more than 18 grams. Guess what? I'm going to have... Well, count. Wait for it. More than one mole. How cool is that? Stunning. Okay. Now, this is water. So now, I got moles of water here. So what do you think I want to put down here? Perhaps moles of water? It's a radical concept, right? 
moles of water. And I want to end up in this case in whoop, molecules, right? <clears throat> now, one mole of water contains how many molecules? Ella. <laughs> Six point oh two times ten to the twenty third. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to take thirty, divide that by eighteen, and multiply that by six point oh two times ten to the twenty third. So let me know what you get. Carter. No, you know why I don't teach freshmen? <laughs> because I had to deal with stuff like that. What did you get? What'd you get? Uh, 1.0 e to the 24. One point, what? 1.0 e to the 24. Now, send to the 24th. <laughs> Molecules. Now, yeah, I got to learn. What? Moles. No, you, you, you forgot to Moles. <laughs> No. Oh, you just straight up. Oh, yeah. What is that? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the mold. I think I see it. Oh, mold. Maybe I should write for you. Maybe I'll see you. Maybe my secretary. Well, I really want to write up there sometimes. Nope. Just let me do one. Can I do it? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow. Okay. Now, does it make sense that your answer is bigger than 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. No. Yes, why? There's more than one mole. Therefore, I'm going to have more than 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to work another problem and I'm going to do this wrong. Okay? Do not do what I'm about to do. It's wrong. Okay? Wrong. Wrong. I'm going to say, okay, hey, uh, I've got uh, two moles of carbon, and I want to know how many grams that is, okay? What I'm going to do is wrong. Do not, under any circumstance, do what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to start here. i got two moles of carbon. One mole of carbon. Oh, man. What's that number? Oh, Avogadro's number. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd grams. Oh, no. That's not Oh, right. that kind of finger shake. Oh, that kind of finger that shake. That is not grams. Oh, now, fast. if you do this, you're going to get 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd grams, which is about a moon and a half worth. Okay? Okay? Orally. Number one, does one mole equal 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd grams? No. No. It equals particles, but it doesn't equal mass. Okay? So don't do that and go, oh, that's going to be a really, really, really big number. And I'm going to have to write really one paper and it's just going to be awkward. Okay? All right. So stop that camera. <laughs> okay, yes, if you go to, like, I'm going to post this, I'm just going to, I'm going to make it public. So if you want to go back and watch this, go to YouTube. I've got my own channel. I have a playlist that says Kim One Honors, okay? And this will be today's lecture. But it takes me a while because I have to upload it and everything. But if you want to go back and watch this, it'll be out there. So here's what you're going to do. First question, what's the relationship between the mole, Avogadro's number, and relative atomic mass. I want to make sure everybody's cool with this answer. What is that relationship? Okay. So they all equal one mole. One mole contains how many particles? Six point oh two times ten to the twenty third, right? And if you combine the mass of all six point oh two times ten to the twenty third, what do you get? Measured in grams. grams. You have to put the n grams on the end of this. So I'm looking for something like this on question number one. The combined mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles is equal to one mole. 
and that's equal to the relative atomic mass measured in grams. Something like that. Spiff it up, but something like that. So on number four, all you're going to do on number four is add together the molar masses. That's all you're going to do. Okay? When you get to question number five, notice I point out all work must be shown. So you got 1.25 moles of carbon. I want to know how many grams that's going to be. Now, if you want to, like, up here to the right, make a little sketch of moles, moles, so you have a visual of which way you're going, hey, great, okay? If you want to use moles, moles, it's fantastic, right? If you, if you just want to do the math, do the math. So where they get complicated is when you get over here, like, for example, uh, you've got on I, on that back side, you have 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd formulas of calcium, formula units of calcium hydroxide in two moles. Formula units is the same thing as molecules. It's just because it's a metal and a non-metal, okay? So formula units and molecules, it's, it's parts there, okay? All right, I'm done. That is due tomorrow. No.